resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. Please be seated. My name is Mary Ann Buddy. I serve as the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Washington on behalf of all of the diocese and all of this cathedral. We welcome you to this house of prayer for all people as we celebrate the life and grieve the death of Matthew Shepard, a particular welcome to Matthew's family. 20 years is not long enough. Uh, you could never dim the memory in 20 years of one so loved 
nor can 20 years heal the grief of such a loss. And so we are honored today to celebrate his life again as we lay to rest at last his physical remains in this place, which will forever protect and honor his physical remains while his soul is safe with God and his spirit lives forever. This cathedral is actually serious about being a place of prayer for all people. So if you are a person of faith, but not Christian, please know that you are our special guest. Be you Jew or Muslim, Hindu or Sikh or Buddhist or whatever, you are welcome here. And even if you're not a person of faith, if you identify with no particular religious community, please know how welcome you are. Let the beauty of this service, the words and the music, wash over you and comfort you in whatever ways you need to be comforted. And in particular, We welcome those of you who are gay or lesbian, bisexual or transgender or queer. Many of you have been hurt by your own religious communities. And I want to welcome you back. And now it's my honor to introduce Matt's father, Dennis Shepard, who would like to greet you. Thank you all for being here today. Um, our family, Judy, Marlo, Logan, and myself feel very honored that you would take time out of your personal life to be here in this beautiful house of worship. Matt loved the church. He loved the ceremony. He loved the fact that it was a safe place for anyone who wanted to enter. That it was a welcoming place for anyone who wanted to enter. And it was a place of acceptance for anyone who wanted to enter. That it was a welcoming place for anyone who wanted to enter. And it was a place of acceptance for anyone who wanted to enter. Matt was blind, just like this beautiful house of worship. He did not see skin color. He did not see religion. He did not see sexual orientation. All he saw was a chance to have another friend. Just like this beautiful home we have here right now. Because of that, we as a family are very honored and indebted to you for coming, 
for showing your concern, for, for wanting to honor Matt, his memory, his legacy, and his belief that we are all equal, all equal. To the National Cathedral, I cannot thank you enough for the family, for leading the way in showing acceptance and inclusiveness for any and all who enter these grounds and this building. For all of the people who are helping us take Matt home, I thank them for again giving up their time. It's so important that we now have a home for Matt, a home that others can visit, a home that is safe from haters, a home that he loved dearly from his younger days in Sunday school and as an acolyte in the church back home. So to all of you who are here and all of you who through the joys of technology or live streaming, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for, for being a part of this. And we, we sincerely hope and pray that you'll come here often, not just to reflect on Matt, but reflect on others that you love dearly. So bless you and thank you. Please stand as you are able. Continuing now as we bring ourselves into worship. God is with us. God's love unites us. God's purpose steadies us. God's spirit comforts us. Blessed be God. the maker and redeemer of all. Grant us with Matthew and all the faithful departed the sure benefits of Jesus' saving passion and glorious resurrection, that in the last day, when you gather all into Christ, we may enjoy the fullness of your promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting.
God whose days are without end and whose mercies cannot be numbered, make us, we pray, deeply aware of the shortness of human life. We remember before you this day our brother Matthew and all who have lost their lives to violent acts of hate. We pray that the gifts of all your lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer children may be recognized, welcomed, and celebrated in the world and in your church. In your holy name we pray. Amen. and ever-living God, we thank you because you made us in your own image and gave us gifts in body, mind, and spirit. We thank you for the life of Matthew and for all that you did through him. As we honor his memory, make us more aware that you are the one from whom comes every perfect gift, including the gift of eternal life. Amen. our comforter. You are a refuge and a strength for us, a helper close at hand in times of distress. Help us so to hear the words of our faith that our fear is dispelled, our loneliness eased, and our hope awakened. May your Holy Spirit lift us above our natural sorrow to the peace and light of your constant love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seemed to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, no powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. One of the scribes came near and heard the Sadducees disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. Please be seated. A week from now, we will be celebrating all Saints Day. And in many parts of Latin America, on All Saints Day, there is a custom where people in the congregation are invited to say the names of those who have departed this life, but somehow are still present. If you close your eyes and open your hearts, Matt is right here. What the congregation says when the name is called out is presente, present, here. And so I invite you, Matthew Shepherd, presente. Let me just say at the beginning that I've been uh, crying for a week now, uh, so I'm pretty apt to cry during this sermon. I just want you to know I'm okay. In fact, I'm way better than okay. And um, with your help, I'll get through it. And you'll pardon me for looking at my notes, which I don't really need, but it gives me some place to look besides you. Matt was luckier than most young gay men in 1998. He had parents and a brother who loved him. He loved his church, the Episcopal Church, and they loved him back. And I have no doubt that Matt is in heaven despite the fact that we actually know very little about heaven. It really isn't about pearly gates and gold streets and angels in clouds looking bored. It is about being with God and discovering that nothing and all creation can separate us from God's love. I think the best picture we have of heaven comes to us in the story of the prodigal son, which actually is not about the prodigal son, it's about the prodigal son's father. And after the son goes off into some foreign place and, and wastes his life and starts feeling like 
He's just done all the wrong things. He's, he decides to go home. And he's rehearsing his apology to his father and, and intends to ask to be allowed to serve his father's household even as a slave. What he doesn't know is that every day he has been gone, his father has been sitting on the front porch in a rocking chair, looking down the road, waiting for his son's return. And when he gets close enough for his father to see him, his father runs to him and puts a cloak on his shoulders and sandals on his feet and a ring on his finger and calls for a party because his son has come home. Matt was loved by God from the very beginning. And nothing, not even death, has separated him from God's love. And I think that Matt was never alone. After the Lord's Prayer, you're going to hear a song sung called Gently Rest and parenthetically called a Dear Lullaby, D-E-E-R, Lullaby, which comes from Reggie Flutie, who was the first police officer to arrive where Matt had died. And she reports that as she approached his body, she didn't notice it at first, but a deer was lying beside him. And from the looks of things, that deer had been there all night long. And when the deer saw her, the deer looked straight into her eyes and then ran away. And what she said is, that was the good Lord, no doubt in my mind. And there's no doubt in my mind either. God has always loved Matt. Uh, they will hate me for saying this, but we're not just here to celebrate Matthew. I'm here partly to celebrate Judy and Dennis Shepard. You know, they could have so easily gone home and grieved privately. But by the grace of God, they decided that they were going to turn this horrendous event into something good. And they did it in big ways and in small ways. Five years after Matt's death, I was consecrated a bishop for the Diocese of New Hampshire. And just before I strapped on my bulletproof vest for my consecration, someone hand-delivered a note from Judy Shepard, which I carried with me. And it said, I know Matthew will be smiling down upon you 
tomorrow. Now, Judy Shepard is the most unlikely of people to be doing all of this. I think it's Dennis who says that on a scale of one to 10 for introversion, Judy ranks about 15. And Judy, I don't know if you remember this or not. Uh, I I've seen her shaking backstage before she speaks. And, and one time in particular, I think this was when we were doing the uh, all-star reading of uh, the Laramie Project at the, at the town hall in New York City. And Tipper Gore was there, and Tipper and Judy asked me to pray with them, which of course I was delighted and honored to do. But it was a little bit surreal because about 10 feet away from us was Cindy Lauper doing what Cindy does to get ready to sing, which is blow up balloons. <laughs> it must have worked because she sang like an angel. And I watched Judy Shepard be introduced and I watched her get taller and taller as she walked toward the podium and her small voice became strong and clear and challenging. They could have just grieved privately, but they shared Matthew with us. And today, they are sharing him one last time with us. Thank you. Okay, now to you. I just want to say to you that if you are here just to pay your respects and to remember Matthew, it's not enough. If you're not here to be transformed, you've come for the wrong reason. There's a Greek word, anamnesis. If you take it apart, the A-N that begins the word is the A-N in anti, that is to say the opposite of. And amnesis is, is the word from which we get amnesia. So it's against amnesia. It's against forgetting. It's about remembering, but in a very special way. It's the word we use to talk about the communion service in the Christian faith. And it's what happens when you go to a Seder meal in a Jewish home. It's to recall a past event so dramatically that you bring it into the present moment and it becomes your event, not just stuck in the past. That's the kind of remembering I pray for today. transforming remembering. One of the things I hope you will remember is that, uh, what is it, 11 years after Matt's death, the hate crimes bill, the federal hate crimes bill was passed and it bore not only Matthew's name, but that of James Byrd, the African American in Texas who was chained and dragged behind a pickup truck until one arm and his head were severed from his body. And the reason we need to remember that is that the bigger picture here is what we human beings tend to do, which is to label someone different from ourselves as other which is code for 
not really human, and then you can do anything to them that you like. People of color know that. The LGBTQ community knows that. Every marginalized person and group in this country knows that. And we are seeing way too much of that at the moment. The other thing I want you to remember is that violence takes lots of forms. And right now, the transgender community is the target. There are forces about who would erase them from America, deny them the right they have to define themselves. And they need us to stand with them. That's the kind of transformation today makes possible. That we see this bigger picture of the kind of violence we do to people just because we don't understand them. So I want you to remember, and then Dennis would want me to say, and then go vote. Okay, so, so I'm a bishop, indulge me. I want to say a word about God. <laughs> now my whole life and ministry, I have been warning people to be very leery of those who claim to speak for God. But that is precisely what I'm gonna do. I usually can resist, but I can't resist today. The church, the synagogue, and the mosque often get it wrong, but God never gets it wrong. I have a magnet on my refrigerator, and it says this, Jesus loves you, but I'm his favorite. <laughs> okay, so here's the miracle. Here's the miracle. Every one of you is God's favorite. Every one of you is God's favorite. I don't know how that can be, I just know that it's true. And I don't want any of you to leave here without being reminded that you are loved by the God of all that is. You are loved beyond your wildest imagining. And nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate you from that love. So the picture I have of Matthew Shepard right now is of Matt sitting in God's great big lap, surrounded by God's great big loving arms. And that's all I need to know. So for you, remember, and vote, and get to work. To Judy and Dennis and Logan and Marlo, thank you for your generosity 
in sharing that with us. This will be the part where I cry. So I have three things I want to say to Matt. Gently rest in this place. You are safe now. Oh yeah, and Matt, welcome home. I'm in.
all those who feel called, I invite you to stand and together may we declare our faith. For all those who feel called, I invite you to stand and together may we declare our faith in God. We believe in God, the Creator, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God, the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us. Let us pray to God, our Creator, singing, O Lord, hear our prayer. God, your will for us is abundant life. May Matthew know the fullness of life in your presence. Know the thoughts of our hearts and our search for faith. Shed the brightness of your light on Matthew, who also sought understanding. ideas and images of you. Draw Matthew into the mystery of your being. as perfect mercy and love. Give Matthew knowledge of that love and mercy. Praise you as the giver of life. Gather all who mourn into the hope of renewed life. Church commends all who die to the care of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. And so we commend Matthew to you, giving thanks for the gift of his life.
Almighty God, to whom all the desires of our hearts are known before we ask, hear our prayers for Matthew and for all who mourn, and grant us newness of life and peace. Amen. Amen. And now in the language that is most familiar and comfortable for you, with faith and hope we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Compassionate God, hear the cry of our hearts for all whose lives are diminished by injustice, prejudice, or violence. Renew their hope, restore their confidence, and hasten the day when your kingdom shall come on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
For there is nothing in death or life, in the world as it is, or this world as it shall be, nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. In confidence, therefore, we entrust Matthew to your keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit in glory forever. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where, where sorrow and, and pain are no more, more neither, neither sighing but life everlasting. O God of the living and the dead, you have trampled upon death and abolished the power of evil, giving life to your world. Give to your departed servant, Matthew, rest in a place of light, in a place of tranquility, in a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, no sorrow, nor suffering. For you, Christ our God, are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant, Matthew. And to you we give glory with your eternal Father and your all-holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holding in your heart all that this time and this remembering has meant to you, go forth from this place in peace and love and confidence in your place in God's heart. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit go with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
beautiful, the beautiful. 